Hang on, hang on. <sighs> I'm back. Okay, so today I want to talk about the X100V. I've had it for nearly a month now, not long after it came out. I can't even think when it came out. So, uh, general use, I would say, like I've had it for three weeks, and um, if you've had an X100 before, you know the score really because they are all pretty much the same same just about the same size yeah they all feel about the same weight generally they are the same uh, so nothing really nothing really different to talk about there really um, you basically know what you're getting if you've had one before if you've not had one before you're really in for a treat because it is a fantastic camera this is just a general chat, it's not really a mega review, but I'm just going to say uh, how I kind of do things with it and how I, so far, have been getting on with it and the changes that they've made. We've talked about kind of the ergonomics, they are all the same really, so you've seen all the other videos handling wise, they are fantastic. Um, I mean, I would say, for me, I never, I never even put the lens cap on. Um, so then when I'm out and about, I mean mostly I have a leather wrist strap and I mostly just have it wrapped around my wrist. Sometimes occasionally if I'm, uh, you know, want it totally out of the way and I don't want anyone to see it, then I will uh, put it in my pocket and it will fit in my pocket. Um, I think if I had a lens hood on, it wouldn't go in the pocket. It'd be, it'd just snag on everything. I think at the most, I will buy the um, the filter ring and the and the filter to make it fully weather resistant. I mean, I've had the other ones which aren't weather resistant, and I've never had a problem with them. I've been out in the rain. I, um, you know, you, when you know it's not weather resistant, you kind of shield it a little bit. But it's had water and everything on the old one, and I never had any problems. But with this one, yeah, I'll, I'll get the uh, the lens the uh, all the bits to go on the lens right so that's the handling fantastic brilliant I can put it in when I say I put it in my pocket I normally wear a hoodie and it goes in that front pocket no problem at all I think if you've got cargo trousers on or something you might get it in the side pocket but it kind of be maybe moving around a little bit too much it won't feel very protected in there but when you've got like a hoodie on uh, yeah it's, it's not too bad in there most of the time I do have it around my wrist have this strap round here and just have it hanging down by my side like that. Anyway, so we're talking about ergonomics and how it looks and everything. We might as well talk about the um, the screen. Uh, I mean, as you can see, if I hold that there so you can see that. It really is pretty flush. You know, you can't notice that it is a tilting screen let's make it a little bit brighter now you've just got this tiny little recess to flip it out now some people like a tilt screen some people don't now for me really i mean i mean lots of street photographers shoot hip shoot to try and hide the fact that you know what they're doing. I mean, you put this screen like this, you know, you can just make out your uh, fiddling with your camera. You you know, you can do a Winogrand style, you know, just whoa, oh, oh, I messed that up. But you know what I mean? You can, and you can also use the touch screen to move the uh, focus point around. So, you know, you could literally, depending, I know a lot of people who hip shoot would manually focus two meters out or whatever and uh you know wait for people to come in that range maybe shooting at f 5.6 or whatever 
and uh, you know it'll be in focus within you know a little bit of that two meter range so you could still do that but at least with this screen you know you can see you can see your composition no no problem at all so to me I don't see why people would want to moan about something that you know if you don't want to use it it's it's non-existent I mean it's it's so flat you can't you can't notice that look at it and they've done such a good job of that yeah that is pretty good hang on let's have some more coffee ah, that probably sounds well noisy on that microphone um right as far as setting it up i mean a lot of the time i would shoot in manual um but also if the weather's constantly going from light to shadow light to shadow or you're kind of going in and out of places where it's a little bit dark and light i would have it <clears throat> on aperture priority and uh yeah i'd set it i, I mean i always shoot f2 not i say always majority of the time because I, I like that kind of shallow depth of field um and i've got the camera set up so they're both uh the iso dial is on a and the shutter speed's on a so then i can just adjust the uh, aperture you know it clicks through and it is quite stiff to be honest it's you're not going to accidentally move that whatsoever. You're never going to accidentally move that. Now, if you're on manual, so you can just put it on, say, ISO 200. You're on manual. What I do like, uh, I think I mentioned this before, you just pull this up. If you can really see it on there. But you can now just move that around wherever you want. You've not got to hold it up constantly while turning it at the same time. So that is a good thing. And also, you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. There was a little C there. If you set it to that. So once you've got the camera put on to C here, in here, and you can leave this on A. You can then control your ISO with this command dial here. And if you push it in, you can also control the exposure compensation. I mean, it's a priority to, it's like the first thing you do when you get a new camera is get it all set up how you want and uh, program the buttons. So here on the front, you've got a little button here which flicks across one that controls the EVF you can have EVF on or you can have the OVF uh, I use EVF most of the time so it just stays where it is but there is a little button on the front that you can push in and out or you just push it and it, I have literally got that one set up to uh, the ND filter so if it's a really bright day you've not got to come in here and go on the menus just press that, the ND filter's on, just like that, simple. Um, now what else have we got programmed in? Like I said, if you change this, you can use this front dial. I mean, even with this front dial not on C, this command dial you can use to change the exposure compensation. And uh, I don't think you can change the ISO when you're not on that, let's just see. No. So that front dial all the time for me, while this is in A, we'll con con if this is on C as well, but otherwise you just use the numbers on there. But if this is on C, you can then use the front dial to change the exposure compensation. Um, <clears throat> also, now, people have moaned a little bit about the D-pad. I mean, it looks lovely and sleek on the back. 
without that D-pad. No getting away from that, it does look really nice. But, I for one, am a bit, I kind of miss it. I didn't think I, what, I kind of do and I don't, because see what I used to do is, well on this camera, like I should say on this camera, you can have swipe set up. So if you swipe up, you swipe this way, this way, you can get it to do different things. Now, I don't have that on. Um, and I rarely use the touch to focus unless I'm doing some shooting from the hip. But as soon as I'm not doing that anymore, I turn that off because I'm left eye dominant. So I put the viewfinder to my eye. I just touch this screen and the settings that, you know, I'll just be constantly changing everything. So I've turned that off. So what I've done, because when we had a D-pad, I used to have say the bottom D-pad, if I press that, it gives me my auto ISO settings, you know, because you can have three different ones. You know, you can have like the lower range, a middle of the range, and a high range. So it was brilliant for that. So I do really miss that. And there doesn't seem to be any other way of setting that up on any of the other buttons. Um, I think you could do it with the swipe, but I don't, I don't want to use the swipe for that. So what I did, Every time you turn a you turn a Fuji camera on, it's always down here at the bottom. Doesn't matter where you leave it when you last use the menu. When you turn it on, it'll always be at the bottom. So there's a thing there at the bottom that says my, and you can set up all the items you want in your own little menus, the things you use the most. So I've got film simulations, image quality, face eye detection, interval timer shooting, um, auto ISO, and the metering modes, you, they're all in there. What I should do is go through and put the metering modes and the ISO at the top, because they are the two I would change the most. So now I can't press a button, like if it was ISO, I used to be able to press the bottom D button or wh whichever one it was it'd come up on the screen and then I could just press up or down whichever one I wanted and then just touch the shutter release and I'm back to uh, shooting mode, no problem. Now I have to come on here, I have to press the menu button and I then go to the auto ISO setting. See now this little bit here where that comes up, that used to come up on the screen while it was still showing what the camera was seeing on the, when you had the D-pad. Now you can't do that. So in a way I'm missing that, but you can't have everything, right? And you have to move with the times and I'm sure I'll get used to it. And I mean, it's not something I'd change very often. I mean, if you're wandering around, you know you're going from a dark to a light place. It's easy to change. And I mean, I've got my base one set at whatever the lowest one is, right up to 800 ISO. So that's the base one anyway. And when I'm on this, I shoot in auto ISO. The only time I don't is when I'm in manual. So that's kind of what I was going to talk to you about with the settings. Now, the other big thing that they've changed is the lens. Um, now, I took a few images before on my F when I went out just so I could like maybe compare those to some of these pictures on here, on the new one. Um, I don't know if I really shot very many close-ups with the F. Anyway, I'll find a few and I'm gonna like put them up on the screen just to compare, but for me, I can see that this lens is sharper. Uh, some people say, oh, they couldn't notice. Some people say um, only close-up, but I just think, you know, just taking photographs on the street, people, you know, whatever I was focusing on, as long as I hit the focus, they looked sharper than they did with the other lens. I think if you're just looking at the other lens, maybe you don't notice it as much, but once you compare uh, and even have them side by side, you know, you can, you can see, a di I think you can see a difference. Now they're saying the battery life is a bit longer. Um, I haven't constantly been out 
and ran one battery all the way down. I haven't been out long enough, not yet, to really get an accurate uh, feeling for that. So I can't really comment, but I mean, people are saying it is a little bit longer. So, I mean, it's the same battery. They've obviously just got a bit more out of the insides to work better. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Now, there's also a lot of people talking about overheating. Now to me, when a camera overheats, you, you know, that's when the message comes up on the back of the screen, says camera's overheating, turn it off. <clears throat> I personally haven't heard that. Now, when you first get a camera and you're setting it up, I probably spent 45 minutes, maybe an hour. It was on all that time and I'm constantly fiddling with it, constantly, oh, do this, see what that's doing, do something else. And it did get warm and it was quite warm. I wouldn't say it was really hot like, you know, but it was pretty warm, but it was because I had it constantly on for about an hour. Now, it didn't bother me because if I use my phone and I'm constantly doing something on that and it's constantly on, that also gets hot. And, uh, you know, I'm not worried about that. It's, it's, I mean, I've used my phone till it was hot, then it wouldn't work and it would just shut itself down. I've not done that with this and I can't see myself ever doing that with this. I mean, I didn't buy this camera to, um, to use as a video camera. I mean, it shoots video. I believe the uh, eye focus is pretty good. I mean, I, I only really put that on every now and again. When I was taking some pictures of my son the other day and it picked his eye up straight away. I did put it on my wife, she's wearing glasses and it didn't really pick her up very well at all. This was just uh, shooting stills. Um, I haven't used it for video. Uh, I may give it a go. I mean, like I said, this is not like some mega review. This is just how I'm finding the, the new V and uh, what I think of it. Um, because most of the time anyway, I, I just have the small focus point and I just like to move that around. I either move it around on the screen if I'm shooting down here or I turn the screen off and I just use the little toggle button on the side for uh, getting my focus point. So overall, I, I really think it is a good upgrade. I mean, you've got a better viewfinder. Now the viewfinder is probably on par with the X-Pro2. It might even be better. I can't remember, it was a long time since I had the X-Pro2. But it is a really good viewfinder. It's so much better than the other one. You know, the whole design looks different. The other design just looked so small. And But this one, it is a really nice viewfinder. It's bright, you can see everything. Don't have a problem with that, that's great. Um, so, you know, the upgrade, you get, you're getting a better viewfinder for sure a lot better than the F. You've got the tilt screen. So like me, I like a tilt screen. I've had it on uh, an X-T3. Really liked using that, especially hip shooting. So that's another good advantage for me. I really enjoyed that. I do shoot manual every now and again, chop and change. So being able to move this dial just makes it so much easier than what it was like before. But I mean, if you don't want to even fiddle with that, you can set it all up, like I said, to that command dial and you've got everything on one dial. Whatever could be simpler than that. That is so simple. Have it set on that, especially if you're uh, street shooting and you just, no problem. It'll always, the focus is quick, very quick, a lot better than the F. Um, in the house, it's probably as low light as I've gone really when it's a little bit gray. So yeah, it's it's better than the F. Um, it can go backwards and forwards a little bit, but I think you, you might be able to set a perimeter on that, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's definitely better than the old camera, definitely. Um, and for me, the sharper pictures, excellent. The ISO, excellent. The screen, excellent. Battery life, excellent. All these things are excellent for me. Excellent, um, all better than the old one. And 
for me it's a definite upgrade or I should say for me the upgrade was worth it for me um, I suppose where it's not worth it is you sell your uh, old camera you're not really gonna make a lot of money on it you know you're gonna lose a bit you might get 700 pounds for it here in the UK um, I haven't seen them going for any less than that I've seen them going for a little bit more than that but I think you've got to be lucky now there's this new one out people might think well I'll wait for they always have like a little sale on or some special offer uh, so it might be well worth waiting around for that um, but all in all I am really loving it and you couldn't really hear me in the last video I, I went for the black version because I always buy silver ones normally and the silver one is probably the nicest silver camera they do out of all the others to date but I went for black this time because I just think it looks really slick it looks really nice all in black it's really it is really quite tiny I mean look it just fits in the palm of your hand it's such a small camera you really it yeah it's not as small as an X70 but you can't get those anymore so it's about a smaller camera as Fuji do and it's a take everywhere camera you can also buy the extra lenses to go on on the top um, I really do like shooting at 23 mil so 23 mil 35 mil I love those focal lengths um, what else is there to say about it really I think I've mentioned everything I had written down you know I don't want this video to go on forever and just bore the hell out of you but I thought I need to make a video I'm sitting at home as you know we're all sitting at home at the minute most of us so I thought I might as well come on here and chat with how I'm finding this camera uh, yeah and it's such a good camera and I've got two third party batteries for that admittedly you don't get the charger but I already had a USB charger that's another great, great thing to buy you know um, I could talk to you about some accessories maybe um, I got this strap uh, let's have a look at that if I remember this is a leather leather one I got this from a guy he's uh, based in the UK and he makes them himself and sells them on eBay uh, and I've also got a longer one that'll go around my neck uh, it's like a corded one he also does those this one was a limited edition but I'm sure he'll do similar ones uh, as and when maybe if he's on a bit of a lockdown he'll be going into overdrive and making a few more so I'll put the link down to his uh, page on eBay and you can check him out um, yeah I've got um, oh, I already had a charger for my old camera and it's a USB one and it's a twin battery one uh, they're third party batteries to me those work just as good on this camera as my old camera no problems at all uh, I know some people moan about third party batteries uh, I've never ever had a problem with the ones I'm using for this I bought ones for different cameras in the past and they don't seem to hold a charge I think sometimes it can be luck of the draw depending on their um, what would you call it their quality control but the ones I've got for this are really good I'll put a link in the description for those as well um, what else have I got for these oh, I can't remember where this came from but I got the shutter release soft shutter release I, you know I just wanted to keep it all kind of as black as possible I can't think you can get a full black one but this is quite nice it's, it's got a nice kind of burly bit on the edge I quite like that um, but the reason I like the USB charger is because if I'm out for a long time or in the past I've gone on a photo 24 kind of thing and you want to keep your batteries charged but you don't want to carry tons of them I used to have three and the USB charger I'll just run it in my bag off of uh, a power bank and the power bank will charge those batteries up I don't know it will charge my phone up about eight times so that is a good thing to have in your bag with uh, all the connections that you need all the leads you need um, other accessories oh, I don't think I have anything else for that uh, so yeah well I hope you're staying all safe out there anyway I mean I'm kind of trying to document the family at home just taking pictures of what we're up to what we're doing uh, 
it, it kind of went mad at the start, but then when the days plod on, you're not really doing anything different. I don't really want to get the same kind of images. So uh, they've kind of slowed down a bit, but I'm going to um, put all those pictures together and maybe make a, a personal type of zine or something like that for, for ourselves, just to look back on maybe. Um, I may put it up for sale, I don't know, because they're more personal pictures. I don't think anyone would really be interested in that. Um, but I have done my very first zine, which is, um, I mean, it's still an ongoing project for me, and it's a, a That's My Point project, which I've talked about way back on, in some other videos. And it's just, um, every time I see someone pointing in the street, you know, I'm trying to uh, get a picture of them. And it's a good project, really, because it kind of helps you stay on your toes a little bit and you know it sort of trains you to constantly be observant about what's going on in uh, in the street or on the street keeping an eye out for things things happen and change all the time and you just you can just be walking along you see one thing you think oh yeah there's a, a shot that might happen here and then well you see someone start pointing you like oh, i've got to get this shot so it's good for working on your camera settings you know being this is why you need to have your camera set up properly. Being quick at getting the settings you want and getting that picture before uh, they stop pointing at something because I think unless they're given directions, you might have someone pointing for quite a while, but sometimes it's, yeah, and that's it and it's gone. So you need to be quick, but yeah, I'll put a little zine together uh, with a few of the pictures that, that I've um, taken from that project. Uh, I think it's gonna be available in about 10 days or so and uh, when it is I'll, I'll show the actual zine i'll make a little video and show you what it's like and I, I managed to keep the price really cheap so i think i'm selling them for like six pounds fifty and that's including the postage so hopefully you know i'll be able to sell a few at the moment i've only going i've only done 20 of those and i will number and sign each one uh there's a little preview i think Every now and again, I'll put a preview on my Instagram. It's only like the first five pages. Um, so I'll, I'll put the preview up there every now and again, and then I'll do a proper uh, thing once I'll make a little video as soon as it, um, as soon as I get the first batch. But yeah, if you're interested, I'll put more details up as I get them. Um, and there's always something on my Instagram account about it. So yeah, anyway. Make sure people that I don't see you on the streets because you're not allowed. And uh, don't put your cameras down. Still take pictures around your house, out in the garden. If you've got a dog, take it with you when you go and take your dog for a walk. If you're going for a little bit of a jog, you know, maybe you could have a little pack on, take a few shots, but don't, you know, hang about unnecessarily, you know, stick by the rules. Um, uh, it's, it's you know good for everybody and uh, yeah there will be a time when I'll see you back on the streets alright people till next time